I just realized that the series score hasn't updated yet. Let me refresh that. No problem, says Daniel. All right. Away we go with game one. It's that simple. With how confident Daniel has been, I'm not all that surprised that he just says no problem as he takes off from a wall. I feel like I'm just watching him take off from all day. The, the amount of times I've seen this, is, uh, it's crazy to see. I'm super curious to see how Moxie's Wave Dash Recovery Kickoff will work against Daniel today. Great save uh, by Moxie on that play. It's Moxie's ground game. Moxie's flicks. Moxie's Wave Dash Kickoffs against Daniel's aerial game, Daniel's flip resets, Daniel's standard kickoffs. They, they really are polar opposites when it comes to playstyle at times. But you might have seen a little jitter to the left there with uh, Moxie's camera. That wasn't an accident. He's been doing that a lot these days. Daniel too good with the top left defense as he opens the scoring on the counter attack. Moxie overextending. For a boost steal, yeah, sorry, I forgot to turn the overlay back on again. I refreshed it and accidentally turned it off, but there it is. Game one. Going the way of Daniel already. We're on EU server here. There's another look at the ping. Similar to what we had earlier on for Daniel. He started off the Zen match with a break of server on EU. Obviously, he started off the Ruas match with a um, win on EU as well. Daniel's just been playing brilliantly on EU server the uh, whole day. And yeah, it looks like that hasn't refreshed the... I'm going to refresh it again. I did set Moxie's flag to French. For some reason it hasn't updated. It should update? Hold on, I've, I've, I've hard refreshed the page. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, apologies for the overlay. It didn't update for some reason, but it looks like we're ready to go now. Yeah, Daniel's just on the revenge arc right now. He's... Lost to everyone in this tournament in the group stage. And now he's trying to beat them all in one day. Trying to beat Moxie for the first game in this tournament, actually. Because in the matchup they played, as I'm sure most of you are aware, Moxie swept him. But Daniel has been different today, and he's different here as well. That last touch in the air dribble is too much. Moxie expected a flip reset. Daniel just pops it over to him. He's always got that option. So many of options available for Daniel when it comes to the aerial play. Now, I wonder if Moxie, he said at the start of this, uh, you know, good job in the tournament today to Daniel. I wonder if he's scared coming in thinking, what on earth did Daniel eat for breakfast if he's beating everybody like this? Because <laughs> recently, um, Ruas and Zen have been the guys at the top of the 1v1 scene, and Daniel's just beaten both of them back to back, so... The sweep against Ruas as well. I mean, I'm sure Moxie's looking at that thinking, what is happening? <laughs> what is going on? Where did this Daniel come from? Because Daniel, you know, all time has obviously been one of the greatest um, peak ability players that we've ever seen. But I don't think we've ever seen a day like this. This is definitely his best day in Rocket League history, I would say. As Moxie tries for the backboard double. Daniel deflects it towards the corner. Like, yeah, can you guys remember a better day for Rocket League 1v1 than Daniel in this one? I mean, he's had some great days where he's, you know, beaten uh, players in North America one after another. Great save by Moxie. But I don't think he's ever had a, uh, a day as good as this one. I think that is probably the best, already the best day Daniel's had for 1v1. And it could become even better, which is insane. Pro Drops? Who did Daniel beat in the last day of Pro Drops? Didn't he just beat um, Evo and... Somebody else beat Jack, if I recall. Oh, wow. Moxie actually bumps Daniel into to saving his own shot there. As Daniel sets up the air dribble bump. Quick play on the recovery by Daniel. Moxie defending bravely. This is some stellar stuff. Oh, yeah. AJ beat Jack. So on the final day, I think Daniel beat Evo and AJ, right? I mean, I'm not, no offense to AJ Evo, but yeah, beating Zen and, uh, and Ruas today is definitely uh, a, a lot harder than beating an Evo AJ. Um, Evo, probably A tier player. AJ, um, most likely a top 10 player, definitely S tier, but Ruas and Zen were literally number one and two in everybody's minds. But Daniel has just played 
I think the best day of Rocket League we've ever seen from is. It's 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 not stopping. Look at the placement. <laughs> Look at the placement at every shot. Bottom corner floor pinch. Top corner grind shot. He's just doing absolutely everything right now. Is AJ going to take that? AJ, I'm sure AJ would agree. I'm sure AJ would agree. Definitely a great day. I mean, that day was the Dandroid day for uh, Daniel, the Pro Drops day. So it was, uh, it was a very special day for a different reason for Daniel. It's the day they discovered a whole other um, character within himself. But I, I think this might be the best single day of Rocket League, not just for Daniel, but possibly for anyone. I mean, has anyone had a better day than beating um, the top two guys and then arguably the number three guy as well? I don't think so. Yeah, it might just be, I mean, those are my personal rankings, like I said at the um, break. You guys can have your own rankings if you want, but I think coming into today, my top three in the world would definitely be Zen, Rawas, and Moxie. Not in that order, I'd, I'd say Rawas, Zen, Moxie probably would be my top three um, players in the world. So Daniel is taking down number two, number one, and now he's taking on number three as well, and he's winning. And it's an FF from Moxie on the EU server. 16 shots. Make it 17, actually. Not quite. 16 shots for Daniel. He dominates the kickoffs, dominates possession, and dominates game one to immediately send Moxie another message. It's not just about how well he played against Zen. It's not just about how well he played against Ruas. He is bringing every ounce of form to this series as well. You know, in hindsight, I think the thing that makes the most sense here is just Daniel getting over that mental hurdle. I'm sure this is something we can definitely all get behind. You know, Daniel clearly had a bit of a mental hurdle against Zen um, after losing three series in a row to Zen. I mean, it's hard not to have a mental block against him. So I think just getting that win against Zen just gave him all the confidence he needed because he has beaten Moxie in the past. He has beaten Ruas in the past. It was just Zen that he'd never beaten. I think that probably had him thinking, you know, am I still that guy? Am I still um, able to be the best ones player in the world? Whereas every other time he plays the tournament, he knows he can if he shows up. There's been no doubt about him today. He's, he's definitely looked fully confident ever since the Zen win. Not a moment in the Rawas series or a moment in game one where he looked like Daniel was hesitating and second guessing himself. Of course, it would be, wouldn't it? A top left corner flick from Moxie. A bit of a slower, more um, air rolly one than he's usually doing. And Moxie trying to score a second, and he does. Well, that is unexpected. Moxie with the boost disadvantage. Threatens the demo, chips the ball middle, and then pops it into the net before Daniel can get there. Too fast from the Frenchman. So important that he gets a foothold in the series early. You know, the way that Daniel's been playing today has been zero unforced errors, zero mistakes, and definitely a whole lot of confidence in his own offensive capabilities. So you can't give him a two-game lead. You just can't. Any player like, uh, like Daniel, you just really cannot afford to do that. Now, that being said, Moxie did, in fact, trail by two games against Ruas when they played in this tournament. And uh, he came back to win that one. So... Maybe if there's one player who can do it, it's the other guy who's got a peak that is just undefendable. Moxie's flicks when they're on are considered by most to be unstoppable. I think I would agree. Daniel picks up a demo in the midfield. The ball's already going on net before a follow through is needed. Great read there by uh, Daniel though. You can see that he's chipped the ball sideways and clearly steers into the demo. It wasn't a fortunate one at all. Moxie. Doesn't get the wave dash he wants. And that's all Daniel needed to tie the game. If Daniel wins the tournament today, where do you place him in the world ranking? I talked about that earlier. It's really, really difficult because he went zero. He came in as, I think, number three. And then he went 0-3 in the group. And now he's going 3-0 in the gauntlet. So it's probably the most, I think, debatable outcome we could have had. I think the only more debatable outcome than this would be Moxie going 0-3 and then sweeping the gauntlet because yeah, when uh, 
when when I had this tournament confirmed, I thought, okay, what what we're probably going to have is you know maybe one upset in the gauntlet based on the group standings, maybe a couple. But pro I never in a million years thought we were going to get a, a gauntlet sweep. You never do when you when you make this. Uh, I've done this tournament format before. You never expect a gauntlet sweep. It is unthinkable to have one. So yeah, it's very uh, difficult to rank. Very difficult to rank. I think the only players who would just definitely be number one after going 0-3 in groups and 3-0 in the gauntlet would be Zen Rawas because they came in as number one and two in everybody's opinions. A Moxie Daniel, I think they might have to do a bit more, but it's definitely very close. I think, you know, this is it's just absolutely close the gap. Everybody coming into this event thought it was just Rawas and Zen and then everyone else. Moxie and Daniel have shown that that is not the case. Moxie sweeping the group, Daniel going for the gauntlet sweep as well. You know, it is much closer than we thought. But yeah, we'll definitely have to, to think about it. We'll have to, like... It, it deserves thought. Absolutely deserves thought. Nobody thought that? Everybody thought that, bro. <laughs> Everybody thought that it was those two and then everybody else. It's just, it's just the way it was. If you didn't think that, then you had um, either ama amazing foresight or denial. Wow, well, Moxie deletes the ball on that one. We're on Daniel POV, first time through in. This looks completely unstoppable. But yeah, I think it'll depend who you ask. I don't know if Fear's watching right now, but I'm sure if, uh, if there's a Fear tournament, you would happily declare Daniel just immediately number one in the world for, for a win. <laughs> but. I, li I don't like to immediately do that when I'm not 100% sure on the numbers. Daniel manages to one-up Zen there, or managed to one-up Moxie. Moxie got a bit of an aftermath demo now. Daniel gets one mid-air. Yeah, when there's just like clear, um, you know, historical results to go off, plus a tournament win, yeah, it's, you don't even need to think about it, but when you've got players who are coming in relatively undefeated and other players who are coming in with losses, on their recent record. You have to, I mean, I, I didn't know before I made a, my last video actually about, um, I think it was around about December, I made a video called my top 20 players at the moment in ones. Before I made that video, I didn't have a, a clear ranking in mind. I, well, I had like a, you know, a rough ranking, but I didn't have a clear ranking in my head before I went to make that video and I did the, the research on the, the games, did the research on the matchups, calculated it all. Yeah, I, that's, that's just how I like to do things. Oh my goodness, Daniel has just put up a ridiculous defensive stand. Moxie surprises him with a turn though. Well, this is next level by both. Daniel forcing one more shot. And Moxie manages to produce that one extra shot a little bit earlier than Daniel was expecting. What a save though by Daniel. This is just unbelievable to witness. Moxie with no boost. Still has a great flick though, oh my word. Well, you're not going to get much more speed from a from a flick with no boost than this. And Daniel correctly put Moxie on no boost. I mean, he backed off because he, he knew there's a good chance Moxie's got nothing here. He probably didn't expect a flick to come out in that quickly. Still, though, Daniel in a huge advantage. He's already won one game on the EU server. If he can win another game on the EU server, then that has to just be... An impossible comeback for Moxie. But Moxie dances past him in midfield. Daniel went for the obvious challenge. And when I say obvious challenge, I mean he knows Moxie can see him here. That's the point. It's so obvious that sometimes it works. Because Daniel knows that Moxie can see him. And uh, he knows that Moxie knows <laughs> that Daniel knows that he can see him. If you know what I mean. Moxie just too good though. He reads the actual challenge, reads the fake challenge, and flicks it past both of them. It's getting to that level with the flick game where you start to just have to, you know, take off your hat and say fair play. Moxie with a wave dash recovery. He's going to be here to save this. It's the advantage for Moxie. Even when he loses a kickoff badly, he can get back usually. Reverse challenge connecting here, but not good enough 50. Daniel with a chance to give us some more drama at the end of game two. But what's Daniel got in the straight spawn kickoff? Looks like he'll just play it to that favored left wall. 
One touch. And a flick from Daniel. Well, that wasn't too far off, but Moxie's got it. Oh, hold on. Well, Daniel, if he played the ball there, would have actually had a chance to keep it up. But he read the hit. That never happened. Moxie does get one. We're switching to US now for two games, though. So that's not great news for, um, for Moxie. The way Daniel's playing, he looks like he is the favorite for the whole thing today. Um, I don't see how Moxie is going to defend against Daniel's aerial game on the US server, but let's find out. I mean, Moxie looked like he was really on the ropes in game one in defense. He was outshot, I think, 16 to, to 10 or something. And if you're if you're that much on the ropes in, in your home server, Daniel really could run away with this on the uh, on the US East servers. I got it, says Moxie in all chat there. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Need to boost, says Daniel. On your left, very useful all chat messages that you obviously want to have at your disposal in case you need to let your opponents and your teammates know anything publicly. Moxie deciding not to flick there made sense as the ball really wasn't sitting pretty on top of his car. And now, slow play of the near post. Oh, that's just gorgeous by Moxie. He just flicks the ball straight up in the air and then places it above Daniel's head. He's all about the pace in general, but that was just a beautiful slow play by Moxie to accurately snipe the top corner. Moxie makes a brief mistake there. Goes unpunished, though. Look at this high-level stuff. I mean, Daniel actually just read that Moxie was going to try and counterattack down the middle and went for the bump onto him to immediately score himself. Moxie pinches down the line. If there's one thing Moxie can consistently do, it's generate maximum power from his wall pinches, but he's not scored all that many. It's so difficult to score them these days. Only uh, after kickoffs do we generally see them. Well, how is Daniel going to attack in this game? You expect it to be the aerial game. It is going to be the aerial game here. And you expect it to work as it has first try. I mean, I don't, ex I don't think Daniel should be playing the ground game of Moxie. I think he's got to play where he is strongest and you know in, in, he, sometimes in other matchups um, the aerial game isn't going to be the just immediate go-to I think versus N it's not like it's not as clear cut but against Moxie he's Moxie is a ground specialist you have to take this to the air against him if you're Daniel and uh, especially with how well he's played in the air today I think you've got to go for that avenue of attack and that's what he's doing here this one is a uh, much less successful effort than that, though. Daniel dropped it. More of a pass to Moxie than anything. Moxie, really all he had to do there is not pre-flip in a wild direction, which is exactly um, what's happened here. Moxie avoids the misplay. Now he's in a very good position again. Daniel forced to concede possession of the team shot on target. Moxie threatening the counter-attack down the middle. Daniel cannot immediately back off for 100 boost. Moxie still leaning left with his flicks. Haven't seen too many to the right like he promised a couple of months ago. Delayed 50 there by Moxie. Does a good job to keep an eye on where Daniel is. Knew he had time to let that one bounce but he's not going to play the, the miss of course. It'd be very silly to play Daniel missing in a position like that. Daniel drops it. Moxie does not react well. This is bizarre. Both players misplay in quick succession. I don't think Moxie expected Daniel to just leave the ball like that. And as such, he wasn't ready for it. Now it's Daniel in a bit of a tricky position. How's his boost management? It's good enough. Again, he has to concede possession with a relatively tame shot off on target. Moxie rushes his flick. After noticing Daniel is slightly out of position, that's a great challenge though by Moxie. Mixing in those aggressive presses on the ball. In what is a very low scoring game, Daniel. Oh, he fakes the air dribble bump and goes for the high air dribble instead. Moxie lunged in to try and throw himself at Daniel, but look at this subtle air roll. Daniel just able to get underneath the ball to chip it top bins. No doubt Moxie was expecting an air dribble bump with how straight Daniel was approaching though. Moxie still able to get a goal back though. And you know, I was talking earlier on about how neither Zen or Rawas we're really able to counter Daniel's kickoff. Look at Daniel pushing the kickoff to the outside. Moxie just goes way, way further than him. So he's deflecting it. 
off the sidewall instead of the sidewall in Moxie's half, it's sidewall in Daniel's half. Now Daniel's missed it. Technically open net there, not that it was an easy one. Moxie was out for the count in the back corner. This would bring us back to an even series. Right now it's a Daniel advantage and it remains a Daniel advantage as an air dribble bump does land. Daniel again, just not making it obvious what he's planning here. He was straight underneath the ball, so he can keep lifting it if Moxie dives in low. But he can just as easily go in front of the ball at the very last second. That was smart play by Daniel. He actually allowed himself to be bumped there uh, because he knew the only direction Moxie could bump him was into the side boost, which both players were fighting for. Right, Daniel. Rolls the ball in low. Moxie reads it very well. That's a massive defensive play by Moxie. He's got to score the open net, though, and he does. Second time of asking. Daniel tries to surprise Moxie with a low 50-50, and Moxie destroyed him. I don't think that was all that well hidden by Daniel this time. Out of all of his plays today, that was probably one of the more obvious ones in offense. As again, Moxie continues to look like the stronger player with the ground game. Daniel with a quick look to his left. Knows he can beat Moxie to the ball. Very difficult shot here that Daniel's attempting. High pop with a reset there is... It's hard to control. Daniel not able to control it that time. Moxie intelligently dribbles the ball back. He's forcing Daniel to join him in the back corner here. Daniel happy to do so, but this is where Moxie wants him. Daniel can't go for the back corner boost because he... He would be leaving the net wide open. you got to be careful though, Moxie. Daniel had a free shot from the back corner there. We've seen those go in today plenty of times. Here comes Moxie again though. And it is a top left corner flick. Of course, from the man who is the best flicker in the game. On a one goal advantage, he trusts himself with his most confident move. Although Daniel is the one who started the series, the stronger the two players, this is a phenomenal fight back from Moxie. Again, dribbling the ball back to his corner. So smart by Moxie, but Daniel goes right through him. Oh, what a challenge! Moxie wanted to keep the ball in the back corner. Daniel is too strong. I don't think Moxie expected Daniel to be on the outside of him like that. Daniel jumped onto the wall, plowed straight through him. And with 25 seconds to go, He's within one, but again, it's Moxie. Back corner boost and possession. Frustrating position for Daniel to be in. I mean, how do you dispossess Moxie here without giving him a free flick over you? Moxie running ahead of the ball. It's Daniel on the goal line, dodging the demo, but Moxie steals the boost away from the back corner. It's desperation times for Daniel. Moxie just playing keep away. Oh, he's really just made this impossible at the end of the game. So well played by Moxie. I mean, he's just got the composure. And he's got the time-wasting tactics to frustrate Daniel. And I'm sure that was a very frustrating experience to watch for all of the Daniel fans tuning in right now. Because what was he supposed to do? It's a, it's a, it's a kind of doomed if you do, doomed if you don't situation. If he charges in, he's charging in to challenge the best flicker in the game. The guy who is just top, top tier at keeping an eye on where his opponent is and when his opponent is challenging. This is the one guy you don't dive in against. But he's, he has to because he's got no time and he doesn't have the ball. So really, really tough position there by Daniel. I mean, it just goes to show you can't give these guys a one goal lead and possession at the end of a game. And one more game on the USC server here before we switch to EU for two. Must win for Daniel, but Moxie's on a roll. The momentum has swung. The baton has been passed. Moxie sends another completely unstoppable flick into the top corner of Daniel's net. And I've got to wonder to myself, I always do every time a ones player comes out and just levels up a mechanic to something we've never seen before. I do wonder, are RLCS players watching this thinking, yeah, I should probably learn how to flick the ball? Because some of the flicks I see in RLCS are atrocious. Um, and yeah, Moxie's just putting everybody to shame. <laughs> it's not really the fault of any RLCS player. Moxie's just in a level of his own. He's raised the bar for what we know is possible with flicks. Um, 
And yeah, I think, I think yeah, it, it, probably most players who watch this are just coping, trying to tell themselves, ah, well, it doesn't matter. It's not a threes mechanic, but I think it really is. You know, I think if players had this flick at their disposal, we'd see a lot more flicks in the game. We'd see a lot less 50-50s. 2-0 though, Daniel back in the octane here. Looking to seize control of the second USC server match. And Moxie's just in the zone. Daniel needs to get into the air here, get, get into his natural habitat. So I think all these grind interactions are favoring, they're favoring Moxie who's just crushed another 50-50. Low 50s have not worked for Daniel very often today, and that one was another disaster. Where's the confidence from Daniel that we saw earlier? Where's the sidewall air dribbles, the ground to air dribbles? I think these have been his main source of goals in every matchup today, including this one. So I, I want to see more of that personally. Ground to air dribble starts here. Daniel gets a bit of a bump on the end of it, and he does score. It wasn't a huge air dribble needed. Just an awkward position that he quickly recovered from. In ones in every mode, let your opponent score first and then, or uh, just score first and watch your opponent be desperate. I think if you, I don't know what the stats are. It will obviously be very skewed because uh, I think Jack explained this pretty well in the first such podcast the other day. Usually the better player or the better team scores first, so of course you expect the player or the team who scores first to win. Because generally, in the vast majority of cases, the better player will score first. But I think 1v1 is the, the exception to that rule because um, I, I don't know the stats on it. I'd love to see it, but yeah, one goal lead in 1v1 is nothing compared to a one goal lead in 3v3. A one goal lead in 3v3 at times looks like a two or three goal lead because teams are, uh, you know, certain teams are very good at defending when they're up 1-0. Um, but you know, other teams not so much. A 1-0 lead for Team Liquid, Complexity, Falcons, like that doesn't look safe. Because uh, they definitely throw away goals, in my opinion. Yeah, one goal lead for these guys. I think Daniel, yeah, one goal leads for Daniel today have looked very, very safe. But that's just because he's defended so well when he's up one. He's defended so calmly when he's up one. Uh, Moxie, not so much. I think Moxie is a bit more of a chaotic player. Things never really look comfortable when he's up one because he's such a, um, I don't know, he's just a, such a rapid player. He loves to dive in. Oh, that's a terrible bounce for Daniel. Oh, it's a nightmare. It rolled up right next to the wall and now Moxie's going to double him and look the other way. Oh, no. Half the game to go. But Moxie has just Brazil Daniel with a no-look shot. Double taps the open net to show Daniel how it's done. And you know, Daniel, he, he bounced back so well in this tournament to come back from being swept in the group and get revenge on two of the opponents who swept him. But it turns out the guy that got the best win against him is the best matchup for him today as well. Oh, that's a great goal though, Daniel. Not done with the game two yet, and I don't think he can be done with game two. There's so long left, you just have to believe. It's an NA server game, you can't be forfeiting right now. That is a fantastic double tap at the near post. Extremely difficult to angle that one in. He uses the underside of the car to place it. Daniel has to believe, he, he's still got time, and his aerials are definitely still threatening every time he goes for them. Oh, such composure by Moxie, my goodness. He just lets the ball go 90% across his goal line just so he can pinch it clear instead of hitting it softly. Here comes Daniel, the pogo attempt. It doesn't land, it's never been his most consistent shot. Unfortunately for him, it still isn't. Daniel waiting for the boost to spawn so he can steal it. It's like he got it, but Moxie won't really care. He's happy to watch the time disappear. Here comes Daniel in the air again. Moxie dives in front of him. Dodges the demo afterwards, but can't pre-flip to get the save. Daniel starting to claw back. Really good awareness there by Moxie to notice that Daniel could be air bump bumping off that reset. He went very quickly there for the save. 
It's a failed wave dash actually by Moxie, but a great follow up with the bump. Daniel actually won that kickoff so hard that it might have made it more difficult for himself. Timing on point for Moxie though, as he counters Daniel's follow up. He's just staying so safe from all the demos that Daniel's attempting. He's not falling for any low 50s in mind games. Moxie playing the ball, trusting his mechanics, and trusting his speed and his ground game to get the job done. Here comes Daniel again. I think he's playing this correctly and he's starting to see success. No more dribbles, no more approaches with the ground play. Daniel in the sky. And you know, this wasn't even anywhere near his peak ability. That was just a no normal flip reset for him. Even, I'd say, a subpar flip reset shot for him, and it still goes in. You know, it's just the threat of Daniel. The fact that Moxie knows anything could be happening when Daniel's flip resetting at, uh, from that close range. That is enough to get goals for the American player. Might have another one here. Moxie briefly lost sight of him. Almost conceded. Once again, it's a frustrating position for Daniel to be in. Moxie's done so much in the mid game. He's so, done so much in the early game. That all Moxie needs to do now is waste time and that's what he's doing but daniel waits patiently and he gets one more still no need to panic just yet i think he'll panic if he loses the next kickoff will daniel mix it up he rarely does he's stuck to his guns all weekend and he, yeah, he sticks to his guns here as well moxie trying to pressure the ball here that's so smart he doesn't actually get a touch though well the idea was there but he missed it daniel fakes a flick wants a 50 He's trying to do something different here, but again, I don't think that's the way to get goals in this matchup. It hasn't been the way to get goals all day, and it isn't the way to win here as well. Moxie will get one more, and not just one more goal, one more win on the US server. Well, if it was hard for Zen earlier on, down 3-1 in the series against Daniel, this is even harder. I think, yeah, uh, Daniel has already left, but yeah, Zen trailed by this same score. The difference was he had two home server games. Daniel is down 3-1 and he has to play twice on EU. I mean, this is, this is difficult. Uh, you know, he's had the best day of ones, I think, of his uh, career. And I think one of the best days of ones I've ever seen from anyone when you're talking one day results. But if he's going to add to that, if he's going to make this perfect, if he is going to avenge his loss to Moxie, he needs to win twice on the European server, and he's not off to a good start. Octane Daniel again. Gets a bit faked out here. Moxie slots it underneath the low pre-jump. Yeah, you know, a lot of people asking earlier on, is Daniel just clear number one if he wins this tournament if he sweeps the gauntlet oh great shot moxie spots daniel off his line and slams it over him he is just playing a perfect series today you know it, i want to ask you guys the same question is moxie clear number one um if he wins this you know he's won less matches in the gauntlet but he was undefeated in the group it's tough to say um off the top of my head i don't know I, i'd have to go and look at the results but he's definitely got a great case definitely got a great case it's you know the occasional show match loss for Moxie, that's the, the issue he usually faces. It's, it's, his activity is almost his own worst enemy as well as being his best friend. I mean, Moxie plays so many one show matches in tournaments that when it comes down to it, when he's on farm, his practice really, really shows through. I mean, look at what this guy is capable of. But yeah, he does suffer losses every now and then to players he's supposed to beat, and that obviously moves him down a little bit in the rankings. The thing is, has he done enough this weekend to just be world number one? I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. I'll have to go calculate it later myself before I can make a confident decision. But he's not done yet. This is a, obviously going completely his way. He is three games in a row against Daniel. Two of them being on US server. And now we're back on EU. Moxie is clearly extremely confident. He just tried a sidewall double <laughs> while Daniel's in net. I'm not sure if that's a high percentage play. In fact, I'm positive it isn't, but shows you how good Moxie's feeling about his chances right now. you got to remember the run Daniel was on earlier. He just hit that flow state that had him at a completely unplayable level um, for Rawas, who's otherwise been immaculate as of late. 
Daniel gets the second one here. It's another Moxie over extension. You know, Moxie stuck to his strengths in the previous wins. He kept the game in his world. He kept it, in, you know, mostly the ground game, the flick game, the 50-50s, time-wasting boost battles. And, you know, when the game's about all those things, as well as vision, you've got to compliment Moxie, not only on vision, spotting Daniel's challenges, but also spotting Daniel's bump attempts and uh, spotting opportunities to bump Daniel. Thank you, Moxie, for the well-timed addition to my sentence. Uh, it's so smart as well to slow roll this, just to try and tilt Daniel even more. You know, if you are to believe Daniel can come back, Really, all you need to do is look at what he's achieved already today. He's beaten Zen, he's beaten Ruas, swept Ruas. You know, a Daniel who did that in the past two hours has to be capable, at least, to have a chance of coming back here. Moxie has been unbeatable this tournament, but Daniel just has to trust that his ability is there, that his dominance of the air is there. He tried to fake having boost in this position. Moxie not falling for it. Goes again and scores again. And he's making this look just as easy as Daniel did against Ruas. Moxie snipes the sixth goal from a tight angle. What a performance we are seeing. You know, if we're to think Daniel is at an all-time peak, which I think he is today as a whole, taking down the, the players he has, just how good is Moxie? That's the question. Because this is this is actually crazy to see. Two minutes left. Does Daniel have anything left in the tank? Very straight dribble. Not much of a flick at the end of it. Nothing to write home about there. Moxie with the flip reset. That gets denied by Daniel. And into the air he goes for the counter. This is more like it from Daniel. He's in front of the ball for now. Goes again behind it. Moxie stops him from getting anything going his favor in this game. Spots the challenge a mile away and puts in a seventh goal. Daniel forced to turn. He's in the final two minutes here. He knows what's going to happen if he backs off as Moxie's just going to dribble up close and flick it anyway. So, I mean, you've got to, you've got to surprise Moxie with challenges if you're going to have a chance. Unfortunately, that one was a bit too obvious. Moxie forces a crossbar pinch in defense from Daniel. Even with 11 boosts and not much momentum, he's still able to force difficult saves from his opponent. Boost seal coming through for Daniel, who continues to fight. He wants to try and come back here, but Moxie fakes him out one more time. Daniel calls GG's. I think that's probably a good idea because we all know Moxie was going to stop that ball on the goal line. 4-1, Moxie dominates. The rule 1v1 Invitational. You guys can decide if that puts him number one in the world. Like I keep saying, I'm going to need to go to the to the spreadsheet and do some calculations here myself. It does put him, I think, number one in the world on RL Jewels. .gg. Moxie celebrates with a simple open net. And, uh, can, and finishes off what has been a mega, mega tournament for him. Complete domination. Look back at the week this guy's had. Starting it off with a 4-3 win against, at the time, world number one, Rawas. And then on the 11th of April, just three days ago, he 4 0 Daniel and 4 2 Zen. Oh, no, sorry. 4 0 Daniel that day. And then he actually played against Zen the following day to 4 2 him. But, yeah, just crazy, crazy level from Moxie this tournament. He beats everyone. And he even brings... Daniel's gauntlet run to a halt with a crushing 4-1 defeat. Absolutely incredible.